Well, 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 this happened way faster than what I predicted. I was gonna say maybe episode 3, episode 4, no, episode 2 we got our first magical girl death. Nemorin, she was just introduced to us this episode. We saw a little cameo last week. This episode we got more background on her. Instantly death. Interesting. Like I said before, man, last week, this anime will be a lot like Madoka Magica, which is why I am watching it. I knew this was going to happen. This would have been way more unpredictable and intense if last week they wouldn't have showed that first scene of that first episode. All the girls on the floor dead. This would have been way more shocking. Extremely more shocking if they didn't show us that last week but they did show us that so we were expecting this to happen even though it took away the zing it was still good though it was still really good because i did like the way she did die because she went into the person's dream and she was giving a motivational speech to this little girl who was awe in awe of this princess in her dream so she died right before she was showing her true colors of how good of a person she really was. Sad to see someone die. Now, other than that shocking, air quotes, death, this episode mostly consisted of pretty much buildup of the other teams because all these girls, all these magical girls are in groups. Some of them are by themselves, others have a whole squadron, and we get the typical pair. So, pretty much in this episode, they explain to us that they gotta collect magical candies. Whoever has the least amount of magical candies for that week, the, the girl with the least amount will be eliminated. As we know, killed. Now, Fave, aka QB, is hiding something. She, it, Fave is killing these girls, and he is probably loving it. Fave is QB confirmed. Now we get a little bit of a glimpse of what these girls are capable of. As we know from last week, each girl is able to do one thing specifically. We get introduced to Top Speed and Ripple. We've seen these two last week, but we get more of a background, more of a story for them. Very interesting. The first half of this episode was dedicated to them and how they actually came to be and how deep their bond is. I enjoyed it very much. Um, Top Speed set up a death flag. Somewhere in their dialogue, she mentioned that uh, magical girls could hurt other magical girls. And the worst case scenario is one of them dying. The so Ripple replies, I, I, I could die? And then Top Speed says, Baka. I said, if. It's pretty much fact at this point, man. Ripple is a typical Sundere. It's going to only make sense for Top Speed, her best friend, even though Ripple doesn't really consider her her friend yet. Is gonna protect her, and most likely it's gonna be because she's she doesn't have enough candies, and then she's gonna do something that she won't have enough candies instead of Ripple, and then obviously she will die from that. With their flashback on how they met, we get also introduced with Mary. I love her name though, Calamity Mary. Pretty legit name. Love that name. Pretty much proof to us she is gonna be the main antagonist. Her and Ruler. Who is in charge of her own squadron. So those two. Keep a lookout on those two. Because those two will be playing a major role. Um, they seem like. Two girls who will do anything. They have to do. To achieve their goal. Calamity Mary. Obviously looks like a girl. That will even kill somebody. If she has to. If it favors her interests. Ruler on the other hand. She seems more of a jerk. More of a dick. She doesn't seem like she'll actually kill somebody. Maybe she'll get annoying. Maybe other girls will hate her, but she doesn't seem to take it as far as Calamity Mary. I am taking a liking to the character designs. It's a wonky style. Very wonky, very weird art style, but the character styles are nice. You see that Ripple doesn't have a good relationship with her parents. Um, I don't know if this is going to play... I don't think they're going to go deeper than that. They're going to just show us, uh, you know, she's not that close with her parents. But we see the texts and we see that the parents do seem like they actually do care about her or pretending to care 
not too sure how that really goes right now. Uh, we need more info, but for me, it's kind of confusing because from what I could read from the text, they do care about her, but she's just being a sender, you know, a typical sender. Um, that death would have been way more surprising if that first scene in episode one wasn't there. Uh, I still stand by that. Could have been way more effective, way more emotional. Uh, still sad to see her go. She seemed like a nice person. She was a neat. She was just about to get a job. But, you know, things happen. Shit happens. And sadly, it had to be her. I thought it was going to be the girl dressed as a dog. I was really sure it was going to be her, but then again, she was lazy as fuck. Memory. That's what I'm talking about. What do you guys think about the second episode of Magical Girl? Let me know down below. I thoroughly enjoyed it. Very good episode. Um, can't wait for the next one, man. Who will be next? Find out next time, guys. Sonia Nara.